Hey everybody, Richard here with the wirelesshaven.com. Today we're going to go over something that some people may need a little help with if they have some problems with the firmware of the LT500 router. And there's going to be times where you're going to want to update the firmware on the router or you need to update the firmware on the router or you just have a general problem and something bad happens. Let's say you lost power during the firmware update, or you just had a really bad issue, and all of a sudden you can't seem to access the router anymore. Now, a lot of people will think that you have bricked your router, and that may not necessarily be true. The LT500 router is OpenWRT based, and that means that on some levels, some of the features, even though they have their specific firmware on here, that means that the features set for some things like recovery are the same for all of them. And the LT500 is no different. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you this feature called firmware recovery mode. And we're gonna show you how to use it and how to get your router back. Hey, Richard here with the wirelesshaven.com reminding you to check out our website and get equipped with all that you need for wireless connectivity, including learning about how to use all the products we have a wide selection of bundles as well as individual parts. And if you check out our section on optimization for signal, frequencies and bands, and other information, including through our Learning Center blog, there's a lot you can learn as well as purchasing our products. So the first part of firmware recovery mode on an LT500 router, the process is actually very similar with other routers, but the first part is actually getting this router to get into the firmware recovery mode before we can actually put a new firmware image on it. How do we do that? Very simple. First thing you're going to want to do is go to your PC, Mac, whatever it is that you have that you can connect to via Ethernet cable. It has to be over Ethernet. It cannot be over Wi-Fi. It must be via Ethernet. And you're going to want to set that up to have a connection with a static IP address. That static IP address needs to be set to the Ethernet interface of your computer, Linux, PC, Mac, whatever it is. So all we need to do is interface this with a web browser, but we need a way to access it. And when the router is put into a firmware recovery mode, it no longer hands out IP addresses. It only has one static IP address for the Ethernet interface, and that's going to be 192.168.1.1. The LT500's normal interface is .10.1, but firmware recovery is going to be on .1.1. So how do we do this? I can show you right now on a Windows PC. This is Windows 10. You need to go to your network, open Network and Internet Settings. That was a right click the first time. Click on Change Adapter Options, and that's going to bring up your network connections. I'm using an Ethernet connection called Ethernet 2. Right click, and then select Properties. Once you select properties, the window that pops up will be the properties for it with multiple options. Choose Internet Protocol version 4 and then click on the Properties button. Select following IP address for static 192.168.1.100 is a good one. Subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Default gateway 192.168.1.1. .1. That's all you need to set. Once you're done, click OK on all of the pop-ups that came up there. And then once those are cleared out, you can close all the other windows. And you should already be ready to go. If you need to, re-plug in the router. Then, what you need to do is go ahead and plug in your Ethernet cable from your computer into any one of the uh, LT500's Ethernet ports. Then, you're going to want to get a small, maybe screwdriver or something similar, and there's a reset button right along the back there, right next to the power port. And the only way to get to it is with a very small, I'm using a little Phillips screwdriver here, and you're going to want to go into that reset port and push it until it clicks. You hear that? Hopefully. Now you're going to push that and you're going to hold it down. You'll notice I don't have power. You cannot have power yet. Have it removed, unplug your router first, push in the reset button, and then get your power cord while holding in the reset button, plug in the power. OK, 
continue to hold the reset button with the power plugged in for 11 seconds. You can count as a standard, you can use a timer, stopwatch, whatever you need. But 11 solid seconds. Once you're done with that, 11 seconds, which we've hit, so you're going to release the reset button and allow the router to boot up normally. Now, what's going to happen is there's a little LED here. It may be really hard to see on the video, but it's actually purple. And what that is, there's only two LEDs on this for a function, one red, one blue. So you can guess what the purple is, it's both of them. That means that we are in firmware recovery mode successfully. So again, unplug it, push and hold the reset button while holding, plug in the power, continue holding for a solid 11 seconds, release the reset button, and for this particular router, check that LED and it should be purple. If so, you're ready to move into your computer and do the last bit of the firmware recovery. So now we're back at our web browser and we're gonna to need to go to the address of 192.168.1.1. I like to use the one you see here, but you can just use 192.168.1.1. Once you enter it in, press enter and you'll go hopefully to the OEM firmware recovery screen. That is, if we've done everything correct, you should see this. Click on choose file so that we can get our firmware file. Now, usually when you download it, it's a zip file. That zip file cannot be used. It will not allow you to use that. So you're going to need to extract through whatever means you have on your computer, the files within that .zip file. Once you do, jump in and select the .bin file. That's the one we're going to use. Click on open and you'll see there that it is saying it's that. Click on update firmware. Also note that you can do this for both upgrading and downgrading the firmware. Once we do that, the update in progress screen should show up. It doesn't really take long for the router to upload the file or the computer to upload the file to the router that is. But this screen could sit here for a very long time. So what we need to do is look at the router to see if the router's LED has changed from purple to red. Could be blue, but most likely not. It's probably going to be red. If it is, then you know that you've completely updated. And even if you try to reload or refresh the page like I did here, you'll see that it can't see it. The reason is because we've got the wrong address now. The router's been reflashed and has gone back to 192.168.10.1. Enter in that address and you should get the login screen like this. Password is admin. Log in. And you'll see here we've got a fresh install. And if you want to check to make sure that the version that you installed is the one, go to the advanced settings, scroll down to the bottom under system and click on firmware. Firmware version is right there.